What can I do about hair thinning in the crown? The most common cause of hair thinning in the crown area is genetic pattern hair loss, also called androgenetic alopecia. Hair thinning in the crown area affects both men and women and can be perceived as occurring in isolation, leaving other areas of the scalp appearing to be less affected or unaffected. There are similarities and differences between in the expression of genetic pattern hair loss between men and women. I'll discuss crown hair thinning in men and women and how we treat this issue in my practice. I'm Dr. Amiya Prasad. I'm a diplomat of the American Board of Cosmetic Surgery and I'm a fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in New York City and Long Island for over 25 years. I've performed hair transplant surgery throughout my career. In 2011, I used a wound healing material called extracellular matrix by the company Acel to help improve the survival of hair grafts and the healing of the donor area. In addition to the wound healing benefits, we observed that thinning hair in the areas that wasn't transplanted increased in number and became thicker. This inspired me to pursue developing a standalone non-surgical treatment for genetic pattern hair loss, which we named Trichostem Hair Regeneration. Since 2011, we've helped people from all over the world achieve more scalp coverage non-surgically using the Trichostem Hair Regeneration System. Although genetics is the cause for 95% of male and female pattern hair loss, there are some important differences to be aware of. Crown thing in, in men tends to start in the central area and expands from where, where there's a whorl or a cowlick. In women, hair loss tends to be more diffuse throughout the scalp. The crown area can appear to be thinner due to a combination of the curvature of the bone structure and the location of the cowlick. Although hair transplantation is a very popular method to address permanent hair loss, there are limitations when it comes to managing hair loss in the crown area. Most hair transplant surgeons prefer to allocate the limited number of grafts available for transplantation towards the front of the hair or the frontal hairline and the mid-scalp as these are the areas that frame your face. Why is there a limit to the number of grafts that are transplantable? This is because the true permanent zone in the back of the scalp that is resistant to hair loss is very narrow. Simply look at a man who's bald and has a narrow band of hair remaining. There is simply a mismatch between the area of donor hair and the area of the scalp, particularly in the crown area. Additionally, the density of hair that can survive transplantation is limited to only about 20 hairs per square centimeter, which is a fraction of the normal hair density of 50 hairs or greater per square centimeter. Hair thinning in the crown area is also characterized by miniaturization of the hair thickness. Transplanting hair into the crown area can cause permanent loss of many of these miniaturizing hairs from the compromise in blood supply made from the multiple stabs involved in the placement in the scalp to implant hair follicles. This permanent loss of native hairs is referred to as collateral loss. As a hair transplant surgeon, I was aware of these limitations, and when I was developing Trichostem hair regeneration, I anticipated that scalp coverage could potentially exceed that of a hair transplant procedure since your existing hair already lives at a higher density than can be achieved by hair transplant surgery. This materialized as we anticipated and we are helping men and women improve coverage of the crown without needing surgery. 
Further, since we are working with your native hair, crown coverage in our patients looks natural as opposed to the sparse and unnatural doll's hair appearance characteristic of hair transplanted to the crown area. We've observed the benefits of the Trichostem hair regeneration system sustaining for three to five years or longer with only one to two treatment sessions that are 18 months apart. Additional medical therapy, such as the use of DHT blockers like finasteride for men and hormonal management for women can also help optimize the longevity of your trichostem hair regeneration treatment. So, although hair loss cannot be cured, hair thinning can be managed. The crown area can be optimally managed since oftentimes the hair in this area is thinning and not completely lost when we see these patients. A further note, thinning in the crown area in men is often accompanied by thinning in the frontal temporal areas as well as the mid scalp. This means that treatment does not have to be limited to the most obvious area but distributed throughout the scalp, resulting in more overall scalp coverage. In women, this is particularly relevant since hair thinning is typically diffuse throughout the scalp. I hope you found this information from my experience helpful. If you are interested in recommendations for your individual situation, you may contact us through our websites or call our offices to schedule a consultation. Thank you.